Let me first introduce myself. My name is Yakir Kotkoda, and I am laid, leading the security researcher at Aqua Security. I have experience as developer, penetration tester, and a red teamer. Currently, I mainly focus on vulnerability research on cloud native environment, open source project, and more. And I would like also to thank two of my colleagues that could not be here but contributed a lot to this session, Asaf Morag and Eli Goldman. So let's cover what we'll discuss during this session. I will speak, I will speak about hidden secrets in, in our development lifecycle, how to detect them, and I will also offer some mitigation to find this uh, kind of threat. We will go over three different uh, research studies conducted by our, our research team. The first one is about Kubernetes secret. The second one is about shadow IT. And the last one is a new one that we have just released today, Phantom Secret. Let's start with Kubernetes secret. So if you're all already familiar with Kubernetes, you know that you can declare different objects on Kubernetes via YAML file, for example, pods and deployments. And one of these objects in Kubernetes is a secret object. And this is how secret file of uh, ob object in Kubernetes look like. I want us to focus on two interesting parts. First of all is the type of the secret. In Kubernetes, we have different types of secrets. They are mainly for validation purposes for Kubernetes and other aspects. And the second one is actually the secret. And we need to understand that by default, secrets in Kubernetes are not, sec are not secure. They are base64 encoded, so anyone can decode them and find the secret. So I want us to, uh, to go over a possible scenario. Let's assume that you have a public GitHub repository, and in this public repository, you have a secret file that declares a secret object in your cluster. So when you will try to use the secret, you need, you need to use the git clone command. After this, you will use the kubectl apply and provide this uh, CLI, the file. And in the cluster, you, you ha we have the API server that will handle the request and store the secrets as it is in our uh, database, the etcd. There are many problem aspects here if you know of Kubernetes. For example, the secret is stored in an unencrypted way. Um, it, it's, so we need to apply encryption at rest and encryption in transient and more. But I want us to focus on the fact that somebody upload to a public GitHub repository a secret file which is a huge problem because an attacker can use the GitHub search feature to find any other instance, instances of, this, of your secret file around GitHub. So this is exactly what we did in our research. We focused on two types of Kubernetes uh, secrets, Docker config and Docker config JSON. And this type of secrets actually hold credential for your container registry in your environment. This have your, uh, the URL of your registry, the username and password. And after this, we wrote a details regex by, uh, and we utilized the um, advanced search of uh, GitHub. And we were very surprised from the result. We found a lot of exposed secrets of many companies and, and the container registry. And 46% um, of them were valid. Let's go over some examples. So. Um, in our research, we found token that related to a sub company, and this was a token to their internal JFrog artifactory. And when we authenticate with this token, we actually found that this artifactory contained more than 95 million different artifacts. So attacker could use this token to download different artifacts, enumerate different uh, artifacts that they uh, enumerate more secrets they have in this environment and more. We have reported this finding to SAP, which wrote the token and investigate the issue. And another example is a lot of Docker Hub account that we found exposed on a secret file on GitHub. In our research, we found 94, 94 uh, different of Docker Hub account, and 64 of them uh, were valid with, without two-factor authentication. So we could authenticate it to this uh, account, and you can see in the table in front of you, different account with a lot of pool images and download, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, container images. Okay, so how we can mitigate uh, uh, this kind of risk? First of all, we must understand that the problem here is not with Kubernetes secret, but the fact that most of the secret scanning tool that we used in our environment will not find encoded secret in our environment. So we must use secret scanning tool that have the capability to do so or do it manually. 
after our research, we added to the Trivi open source uh, vulnerability scanner and secret scanner a rule that can find this type of, of, of uh, secrets. So you can run it in your environment to find any open, ins any exposed instances of uh, Kubernetes secrets. And if you still want, for some reason, to upload a Kubernetes file to your public GitHub repository, there are solutions like Sealed Secret and Mozilla OSPS that will encrypt your secret file. And in this way, only developers or workflow that have the private key for this specific file uh, will be able to decode or de decrypt this uh, secret file. So let's move on to Shadow IT. First of all, we need to understand what is approved IT. Approved IT include any devices or software that your IT department allow you to use in the corporate uh, network because they have some policy or observation on these uh, devices and software. And Shadow IT is exactly the opposite. It's any software or devices that your IT department do not know that you use in your personal um, workstation and more. And in our research, we found that because COVID and the fact that some of us working from home sometimes, sometimes co corporate secrets can find themselves in a personal GitHub repository of employee. So we have decided to analyze the past research that we have conducted uh, uh, before, and we found that in the previous research of Kubernetes, 66% of the tokens that we found were at personal GitHub repository of employee. And in another research that we have conducted about exposed artif art, uh, artifactory and registry, we found that more than 80% of the tokens that we found were at personal GitHub repository of employee. So let's go over some examples. In our research, we found on, one of, on a public GitHub repository of Microsoft employee token to internal Azure registry that used by Azure. And this, um, this container registry contain internal project used by Microsoft, for example, Azure IoT Edge and more. And in our POC, we proved that this token had elevated privilege. So we could actually push malicious image to this uh, container registry. And more, so this could use to perform supply chain attacks against Azure and its user. We also reported this to Microsoft, which uh, acknowledged us and rotated, rotated the token. And another example was at a personal GitHub repository of a Reddit employee. Here it was a, a token to a private container registry of Reddit. It contained many container registries that used by Reddit. Again, we reported this and they rotated the token. Okay, so how can, how can we defend our, ourselves from Shadow IT? First of all, we must educate uh, our employee and constructor to scan their own GitHub repository for secrets because sometimes, accidentally, secrets can find themselves in their uh, public repository. Then, as, as an organization, it might be a good idea to search for any special indicator that you have in your environment um, for example, let's assume that you have a JFrog artifactory or specific container registry in specific URL. Try to use the GitHub search to find if, to find if there are any exposed instance of this registry uh, on different repository on GitHub. In this way, you can maybe find uh, empl employee that uh, accidentally leak uh, details about this specific container registry. And then always generate token with specific uh, scope and with a time limit, so this uh, um, token will expire uh, in the end. Okay, so now, now let's speak about phantom secrets. In order to capture your attention, I would like first start with some example that we found by using these uh, strategies. So in our research, we found on one of Mozilla pri private public GitHub repository token to their fuzzing infrastructure. In our POC, we were able to prove that we could download more than 1,000 different potential vulnerability, uh, potential vulnerability in the Firefox browser. And it's also important to mention that the Tor browser is based on Firefox. So any vulnerability that we leaked from this infrastructure could actually affect the Tor browser too. We have reported this finding again. They give us uh, critical scores for this and they investigated the issue. And another example that related to Mozilla was a token to their telemetry uh, dashboard. This telemetry dashboard contained a lot of uh, aggregate, aggregated data about Firefox users in order to improve the performance of Firefox. 
In this case, we found the token in, with uh, this strategy um, that allow us to authenticate to this uh, uh, infrastructure. And it's also important to mention that we are not the only security researcher or bug bounter that look for this specific token on Mozilla. There are many that doing it uh, frequently, but we had a special strategy that I will uh, cover uh, in this uh, section. So again, we have reported this, they gave us critical score and uh, wanted a token. So let's understand how we did this. Okay, so secret can, uh, could be leaked in our code base via different file. For example, it could be Terraform file that contain credential for our uh, AWS environment, or even PE or ELF uh, release that we have in our environment that uh, actually have hard-coded secret. And organization have many strategies to find these leaked secrets. Most of the organization use something that's called Git pre-hook uh, pre in order to prevent secret from being pushed to, uh, to the remote or GitHub um, by alert user that they accidentally have a secret in their uh, commit. And other organization actually use secret scanning tool to scan their code base and they actually repeat this action again and again and again. So, um, as I mentioned, we need to use secret scanning tool in order to find this kind of uh, secrets. But there are many, and when, okay, so when we speak about secret scanning tool, we need to understand there are many uh, type of secret scanning tool. Here are uh, two examples of, uh, that include Git leaks and Truffalog. And each secret scanning tool have its own strategy. For example, we have some tools that use a regex approach and some other use entropy strategy in order to find HANO secrets in our repository. We need to combine between them because each one of them has its has it, has it, has it, has it advantages and disadvantages. But secret scanning tool have also some blind spot by design because Secrets do not follow specific regex or pattern, or if we're using a secret scanning tool that use an entropy-based strategy, sometimes we will have in our code base string with high entropy, so the, these tools sometimes have high uh, false positive uh, ratio, and secret could be anywhere in our code base. But there is more. We found in our research that there is another problem that we need to consider, and let me explain. Most of the secret scanning tool using behind the, the scenes or introdu introduce their user to use the git clone command. Because some edge cases and design, design choices of git and github or other SCM, sometimes we will miss content if we only use the git, the git clone command. In this research, we will mainly speak about github because it's the most popular one, but some of these findings uh, are uh, applied to other uh, source code management as well. So we will categorize the secrets to three different categories. First of all, secret that accessible via git clone. Then secret that accessible only via git clone dash dash mirror. And I will explain what is the meaning of dash dash mirror later. And secret that accessible only that something that's called cache view in our SCM platform in this case. GitHub. Let's start with the most basic one, secret that accessible via Git clone. So this is the most popular approach and a, de a, developer, a developer or a workflow use the Git clone command in order to fetch our data from GitHub in this case. Then our Git CLI will download the content from GitHub and we will have it locally. After this, we can use our preferred secret scanning tool in this, case, uh, we, in this case, we use the Git leaks, and we will find a lot of secret that might be in our code base in this approach, around the, around the history, and in different branches that we have in our code base. But it's turned out that secret could be in other places too. Let's move on to the second part. Secret that's accessible via Git clone dash dash, dash mirror. Two years ago, a cybersecurity company called uh, The Nightwatch released a blog about a CVE, they named uh, Gitbleed. And in this blog, they say that because uh, some edge cases of Git, um, some deleted content will only be available if you use the Git clone command. So let's understand what they did in the research and we'll expand this with our finding. So let's assume that the moon is the 
available content that you have in your repository when you download it with the git clone command. When you will, will, you will download your repository with the git clone dash dash mirror, you will find more content, and in this content, secret, secret uh, could be hide. In order to understand the git clone dash dash mirror command, I will speak about some git internal terms. I will try to simplify, simplify this, so let's start. We, are, we have uh, some, we have different uh, components on Git. The most basic one is blob. Blob are just a binary representation of files and they contain the content of file. Above this, we have three. Three point to blobs. And they actually, you can think about them as directory and subdirectory, and they will also contain the name of the blob because blobs do, uh, do not have names. Above this, we have the most popular Git component, commits. Commits are actually what create our all history in GitHub. They will point to a tree, and they will have SHA-1 as their unique identifier, and also some metadata like the author, the date, and so on. Above this, we have something that's called references, and references are just a pointer to a specific commit. You can think about them like a nickname for a specific commit in your history. And here you can see that we have two references, and references always start with the prefix ref slash something. In this case, we have ref slash add. And when we see ref slash add, it's actually it's something that's called in Git branch. So we can see here that we have two branches, the master branch and the bug fix branch. We can omit different parts of, uh, of this string, and Git will know how to handle it. We don't need to call all, all the full uh, name of the, the references. We just, of the reference, we just can uh, call the bug fix uh, reference as a bug fix. And here I gave only example of uh, one type of reference, but of references, but there are more types like nodes, tags, and more with different uh, prefix, as you can see here. So, Let's move on and understand how the git clone command behaves behind the scenes. So let's do a git clone command for our repository. Then we will open the git folder within our, uh, within our repository, and we will open a file that's called the config file. In the config file, we can find an interesting part that actually gives instruction to the, git, to the git how to fetch data from the remote. You can see here that we instruct Git to take everything that starts with the prefix ref slash add, which is actually a branch, and map it locally to something where that starts with refs, remote, and origin. In this case, we will have all of, uh, we will actually get all the branches that we have in Git in our local uh, workstation. Now, let's understand how the git clone dash dash mirror command be behave behind the scenes. So we will do the same. This time we will clone project with the dash dash mirror flag, open the same config file. This time you can see that we don't, uh, that we instruct Git not to search for a specific pattern or specific prefix. We actually have the, pre the asterisk. So we actually tell our Git to fetch every reference that exists in our remote. So Git clone will provide us only part of the content or reference that we have in our repository, and git clone dash, dash, dash mirror will provide us more content. Now, let's visualize this. So let's assume that we have a GitHub repository with these four uh, references. As, as, I say bef as I said before, references are just a pointer to a commit. If we will use the git clone command, we will only fetch two of these references, the, branch, the branches. If we will use the git clone dash dash mirror, we will fetch everything. And you can see that we, that we can see that we have difference. And in this case, it's very problematic because we have, in, we have a reference that starts with ref pool that actually point to a secret. In our research, we found many examples of things that you will never find uh, with the git clone command. Let's go over the simple one and its pull request references. So in GitHub, we have a special reference that's called pull request, and it starts with ref slash pull, then the pull request ID. And we must understand they are read-only. We, can, we cannot delete them, and if we want to delete them from our remote, we need to, speak to, we need to talk to GitHub to delete uh, this kind of reference. And because we know that the git clone command only brings references that start with add slash 
uh, sorry, pref slash add, they will not fetch with the git clone command. So in this case, we must use the git clone dash dash mirror to get their content. And if you want to list your, uh, rem your remote uh, reference in your project, you need to use the git ls remote. So consider this. If you have in your open source project or in other project in your organization, pull request that contains secrets, and this pull request uh, was closed or squash, uh, squash and merge, or this pull request was open from a fork, you will never find secret within this pull request if you will use only the git clone command. So from now on, you must use the git clone, git clone dash dash mirror command and not the git clone command. And of course, there are much more uh, complicated uh, examples that we give in our uh, that we gave in our blog, so you can read it. Okay, but it turns out there is more uh, deeper place to look for, and let's speak about something that's called cache view. So, we must understand that when we commit something or push something to our SCM, it will exist there forever. Even if you try to delete specific commit from, from your history and you will not find it with the git clone and the git clone dash dash mirror command, it's still accessible on GitHub. They have cache that actually saved this, uh, a cache that actually saved this, uh, the content of this commit. So if attacker know the specific SHA-1 of the, of the commit that you try to hide or delete, they will be able to get the content of this specific commit. And it's really simple, all attacker need to do is to access the GUI of GitHub or the API, and after the commit endpoint, provide the SHA-1, and in this way, you will get the content of this specific commit, and after this, you can run, the attacker can actually run secret scanning tool. Few months ago, a cybersecurity um, company that called uh, um, New Dime released a blog about some of this finding. We will extend this and uh, offer some uh, other methods to find this kind of uh, threats. So what is the challenge with this approach? We must know the SHA-1 of the commit that we, we are trying to hunt in our environment. And here you can see there are many permutations for SHA-1, so it's not really realistic to try to brute force any commit that we have in our environment. So let us to offer some way to find this kind of, uh, of threat. Okay, so instead of provide the full SHA-1, we can actually provide on GitHub, for example, only the first four characters of, uh, of commit, and GitHub behind the scenes will redirect us to commit that exists with the same prefix. If there, is if there are collision with other commits, we need to try to use five characters and more. It's the same as in Bitbucket. In GitLab, for example, we need to provide only the, the seven first character and more. And in Azure Repo and AWS Code Commit, it's not possible. We need to provide the full uh, SHA. Another approach is to use the Git uh, REST API. We have REST API that's called event, and this event collects a lot of data that uh, uh, was in our uh, repository. And it's possible to write regex and try to find different commits that, uh, uh, that were involved in our project. This method is heavily, heavily used by the research that I have shown you before. But this API has uh, a lot of limitations. For example, it contains up to 300 uh, of events. And after 90 days, they delete, uh, GitHub will delete uh, events from this API. In our research, we found more interesting behavior. So, for example, it's possible to find interesting uh, strings that exist on pull request that actually contain uh, on 100% a cache view commit. If you will see in your pull request on GitHub something like push, force, and then to commit, the first one will be always uh, a cache commit. So it's possible to write scri script and scrape a different commit that you have in your pull request. And the most realistic approach is to use something that's called Git archive. It's actually a project that collects a lot of data that were uh, on GitHub between 2012 and 2021. And then we can find a different commit that were exist in our project and actually download them. In our blog, we give details instruction how to find and to use this data set to find cache view commit that were involved in your project. Okay, so we've decided to check how much realistic this approach and this different strategy that we have shown here. So we analyzed the top 100, 100 organization on GitHub 
which contain together more than 50, uh, 50, more than 50,000 of different uh, repository. And then we check how many, how, how many cigarettes will be missed if organization only use the git clone command. And we found that around 18% of, of potential secret will be missed uh, if organization will not, uh, do not use the git, clo the git, the git, git clone dash dash mirror command. So let's go over some finding. Except the Mozilla finding that I showed you before, we found Mozilla Mirica API token that gave us access to network devices, SNMP secret, camera footage of some of the Fortune 500 company. We reported this finding to Mozilla and the affected company, and they investigated this issue, of course, and rotated it immediately. And another example of token that we found with this strategy, I think this one was at, uh, uh, with the mirror version of the repository, was an uh, exposed Azure service account token for a major healthcare company. And this token actually provides us full access to their AKS, ACR, and more. And we were basically admin in their env in environments. Of course, they had to investigate this issue and rotate this, rotated this uh, token. Okay, so let's, some, let's offer some mitigation for this kind of threat. First of all, from now on, every time that you push something for, uh, to GitHub, you need to consider it as it's already exposed and you need to rotate it. Because we've seen that it might be existing in your mirror version or it's it might be exist still in cache view on GitHub and other SCM. And you, if, you want if you want to delete this, the secrets and the commit, uh, completely, you need to contact, to contact GitHub in order to uh, delete uh, this commit from their server side too. Another thing is use, using always the git clone dash dash mirror command. As we've seen, it actually will provide us more content about our repository. And I need to mention that the, when we download the repo with the git clone dash dash mirror, this kind of uh, repository will have a, a spatial format. It's called a bare repository. So in our blog and here you can see how you can use git leaks and truffle log to scan, to scan this specific uh, type of, uh, uh, of format, of repository format. And if you are doing, if you scan your mirrored version for the first time, it's recommended to, to only focus on the delta between the mirror version and the closed version of your repository to reduce false positive and actually fo focus on something, on a new finding in your environment. And of course, use, you need to use the GitHub data set and more in order to find more exposed uh, commit that might contain secrets in your environment. Okay, so we, go, we spoke about Kubernetes secret, shadow IT, and even about phantom secret. Um, you can find a lot of mitigation and detection in this, uh, in, in, uh, this, uh, these blogs. And of course, uh, you have this uh, presentation of the, on the website. And please apply, try to do this uh, mitigation because if you not try to do this, a uh, bug bouncer, attacker, or threat actor will utilize or use this, the same uh, method. So thank you. If you have any question, um, that's it. Uh, it depends. <laughs> Most of the time, if we found key, we need to check if they have uh, some bug bounty program or other uh, policy. Uh, if they do not have, we need to uh, maybe uh, talk to them. I know that, for example, IBM do, do not want you to check uh, if a specific token is valid. You need to just report uh, the token to their security team, and they, uh, they will uh, validate it. Um, but in most of the cases, we actually found token for a major company, and we do not have any way to report uh, them this finding because they do not have a security MD file in their GitHub repository, or they do not have any bug bounty program. And the only email that we found was of their sale team. So we actually <laughs> sent a mail to their sale team about a huge breach that they have in uh, their environment. And sometimes we even did, uh, did not get any response from their teams. So I hope that everything is okay with them. <laughs>